Most of the time, when you follow the step-by-step -step process for drawing Lewis structures, you find one correct bonding structure for a molecule. Occasionally, though, you might find yourself with two or three possible structural arrangements that you need to choose between. In these cases, a calculation of formal charges on the molecule is one way to help distinguish the most likely structure. And if that calculation of formal charges actually turns up two or more equivalent structural possibilities, then it's likely that you have a molecule that exhibits resonance. Let's look at an example of a molecule where we might come up with more than one possible Lewis structure. So we'll look at carbon dioxide, and we'll start by determining the number of valence electrons. Well, carbon is from column 14, so that's four valence electrons. Oxygen, column 16, so six valence electrons times our two oxygen atoms. We end up with four plus 12, which gives us a total of 16 valence electrons to distribute in the molecule. Next, we'll come up with a skeletal structure. We're going to place carbon in the middle because it's less electronegative than oxygen, and we only have one of them. We'll connect each oxygen to the central carbon with a single bond. So let's subtract out those bonding electrons from our total valence electrons. We start with 16. We subtract out two bonds with two electrons each, and we are left with 12 valence electrons to place. We'll put them around our terminal atoms, our oxygens. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. This leaves us with zero electrons to place. So the fourth step is not necessary. We have no electrons left to place on the central atom. Even though we don't have valence electrons left to place on the carbon, we do still need to give it a full set of eight. So to do that, we're going to have to share lone pair electrons from the oxygen with the carbon. How do we do that? Which electron should we share? So here's one possibility. Each oxygen could give a lone pair to share as a bond with carbon. That would result in two double bonds, one between each oxygen and carbon. Here's another possibility. One of the oxygens could share two sets of lone pairs. This would result in a triple bond between carbon and one oxygen and a single bond with the other oxygen. So which of these two final structures is right? Both of these structures contain the correct amount of valence electrons. And in both structures, all the atoms have a full octet. So how do we distinguish which one is correct? The answer is that we calculate the formal charge. Formal charge is a type of electron bookkeeping system for molecular substances. It's not a real charge, but a hypothetical one based on how electrons are shared between the atoms. Essentially, it balances the number of valence electrons that a free atom brings to the molecule and the number of electrons it shares and keeps its lone pairs. So the formula for formal charge, and we calculate this for each individual atom within a molecule, is the number of valence electrons that atom originally has minus the number of lone pair electrons on that atom minus the number of bonds that it forms. So to distinguish between our structures of carbon dioxide, we first want to calculate the formal charge for each atom in those proposed structures. We'll start with the one on the left and the first oxygen on the left. It's in column 16 of the periodic table, so that's six valence electrons that each oxygen brings to the molecule. We'll subtract from that the four lone pair electrons that are on that particular oxygen atom. And we'll also subtract from that the two bonds that it forms with the carbon. So six minus four minus two gives us zero for the formal charge on that oxygen. It's actually the same situation for the oxygen on the other side. Also six valence electrons. It has four lone pairs on it and two bonds, so that's zero for the formal charge. The carbon in the center comes from column 14. So four valence electrons that it brings to the table. 
it has zero lone pairs on it, but it does have four bonds, two on the left-hand side and two on the right-hand side. So four minus zero minus four gives us zero for the formal charge. Now we'll go through the same process for the other structure. Starting with the first oxygen, we have six valence electrons minus the two lone pair on this one and the three bonds that it forms with carbon. So six minus two minus three, the formal charge is plus one. For this carbon, we have four valence electrons originally, zero lone pairs. We still have four bonds. They're arranged slightly differently. This time we have three on the left and one on the right, but it's still a total of four. So that's four minus zero minus four, and that's zero for the formal charge on the carbon. And finally, our last oxygen, we start with six. We actually have six lone pairs on this one, or six lone pair electrons at least. And we have only one bond, a single bond with the carbon. So six minus six minus one gives us a charge of negative one. Now, even though in this last structure we ended up with formal charges of plus one and minus one, you'll notice that those two charges on the oxygen actually cancel each other out, plus one minus one equals zero. And, and this makes sense. The molecule itself is neutral overall, so the net charges should actually add up to the net charge on the molecule. So for a neutral molecule, that would be zero. If we had an ion, it should add up to whatever the ion charge actually was. So the Lewis structure that is the most likely, the preferred structure, is always the one in which all or most of the formal charges on the atoms are zero. In this case, that corresponds to the Lewis structure on the left with two double bonds coming off of the carbon. So in this case, the electron sharing between those atoms is the most balanced for each of those atoms, for what they bring to the table in terms of valence electrons, what they share and what they don't share, it is the most balanced. That's what a zero formal charge actually indicates. It isn't the case for the structure on the right with a triple bond on one side and the single bond on the other. So this is the correct Lewis structure for carbon dioxide. There are a few other guidelines for using formal charge. We look for formal charges that are zero. If that's not possible, then we look for the structure with the smallest formal charges. So I've added another possible Lewis structure for carbon dioxide here on the right. This time oxygen is the central atom with carbon on the outside. You can see what actually happens to the formal charges. You can calculate these for yourself for this particular Lewis structure, but the oxygen in the center would end up with a plus two charge, while the carbon on the right would end up with a minus two charge. Now, this is definitely the least preferred of all three of these possibilities, partly because the formal charges are the highest in magnitude, twos instead of ones or zeros, and because the third guideline we have for using formal charges is also violated. For our Lewis structures, if we have to have formal charges on them that are greater than or less than zero, you want to have a structure in which the negative charges are found on the most electronegative atom. And in this particular structure, we actually have the carbon, which is the least electronegative atom, with the most negative formal charge. So these guidelines should help you pick the most likely structure for most molecules. Okay. So occasionally you might run across structures where there are two or more equally likely possibilities, meaning that they have the same basic formal charge arrangements. Let's look at an example. These are two possible Lewis structures for the nitrite ion, NO2. They're similar, but there is a critical difference. It's where that double bond actually forms. Is it between the oxygen on the right or the oxygen on the left? Small differences, but these are distinct molecules chemically. So which one is the actual preferred structure? We calculate formal charge to see if that helps us define this.
So starting with our first oxygen, we have six valence electrons for oxygen originally, minus the six lone pairs and the one bond. We end up with a minus one for that formal charge. The nitrogen has a zero formal charge, five valence electrons, two lone pairs on it, and it has three bonds total. And the oxygen on the right with the double bond, six valence electrons minus the four lone pairs and the two bonds gives us a zero formal charge. So these all add up to negative one, which is the net charge in the molecule, so that's good. We'll also look at the uh, structure on the right. Turns out, we have the same exact distribution, just flipped. But we have, for both of these, two atoms with zero formal charge and one atom with negative one. So which one is the correct structure? We have to turn to experimental evidence to figure this out measure those bond lengths between the nitrogen and the oxygen and figure out which one actually is the double bond. And it turns out that when you measure the bond lengths, neither of these structures is correct. So a double bond should be shorter than a single bond. But when we measure the bond lengths between the nitrogen and the two oxygens in this molecule, it turns out that both of those bonds are the exact same length. And furthermore, they're shorter than a single bond should be between nitrogen and oxygen, and longer than a double bond should be. A more accurate description of this molecule would be to say that the bonds are an average or a hybrid of a single and a double bond. Unfortunately, this is a structure that Lewis theory does not describe well. There are no half bonds in Lewis theory. It's a limitation of the theory, unfortunately. There are other bonding theories that can describe this situation better, but we do have to have a convention for actually showing these types of structures with our Lewis structures. And to do that, we use something that, are known, that is known as a resonance structure. Resonance structures depict both valid Lewis structures and draws an arrow between them. By convention in Lewis theory, this notation means that the true structure of the molecule is an average or hybrid of these two forms. In summary, Calculation of formal charges can help us determine the most likely Lewis structure for a molecule when multiple forms seem valid, and when formal charges cannot distinguish between equally valid structures, it's possible you have a resonance structure.